This video was made possible by Mizizi International, the official African diaspora clothing brand. Visit MiziziShop.com for more information. Beneath Zambia's soil lies a geological bounty, making it a global powerhouse in certain minerals. It reigns supreme as Africa's largest copper producer and the world's seventh, boasting some of the highest grade copper deposits on Earth. Cobalt, essential for modern batteries, finds a significant home in Zambia, along with emeralds, shimmering green gems coveted for their brilliance, of which Zambia produces a staggering 20% of the world's supply. Manganese, nickel, gold, and a smattering of other gemstones like aquamarine and tourmaline complete the picture, painting Zambia as a land brimming with mineral riches. However, despite its abundant mineral resources, Zambia still grapples with poverty and development challenges. While mining contributes greatly to exports and jobs, various challenges have impeded the country's ability to harness the full potential of its mineral wealth, signaling a need for strategic planning to unlock the untapped economic opportunities within its mining sector. But now Zambia has come up with a clever plan to get more money from its mineral wealth, a move many experts are calling a game changer. What is this plan? How will it change the global minerals market? And how will it benefit Zambia and potentially spark a revolution across Africa? In today's video, we will shed more light on these questions and many more. Before we dive into our topic today, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channels and ringing the bell to be notified about all our exciting future videos. In a groundbreaking and strategic departure from convention, Zambia has announced a transformative shift in its approach to the global copper market. The country has decided to break away from traditional trading practices and embark on a direct copper trading initiative, challenging industry giants like Glencore and Mercuria Energy. Essentially, Zambia is no longer content with being only a mere supplier of copper, but is now seeking to unlock the full potential of its mineral wealth by becoming a market player itself. The government's plan involves initiating direct copper trading with an initial investment of around $100 million, signaling its intent to have a more active role in the copper value chain. Furthermore, there are discussions about potential legislative changes within the next three to six months that could enable Zambia to receive physical metals from some mines instead of relying solely on royalties, a move that would provide the nation with greater control over its valuable resources and potentially reshape the dynamics of the global copper market. Direct trading allows the country to negotiate more favorable prices and terms for its copper, fostering a more lucrative and sustainable approach that goes beyond the constrained financial returns associated with traditional royalty models. With this bold move, it is clear that Zambia, like neighbors Botswana and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is attempting to maximize economic benefits from its mineral wealth by gaining access to commodities that can be sold directly to buyers. While the government has stakes in various mines, it has long argued that state revenues from them are insufficient. We obviously want to do it in a way that's fair, that's commercially suitable for the mining companies. To say that we can come as a commercial player to compete with the other commodity traders, to make financing available for the mines for us to have a fair share of the resource. Jito Kayumba, President Hakainde, Hechilema's senior economic advisor, said in an interview on Monday, February 5, 2024, We've reached the point where we have to be disruptive. Our benefits from the sector has been quite minimal. There's a lot of financial engineering, call it creative accounting. Transfer pricing reduces our chances of getting a good dividend, Kayumba added. According to Kayumba, the government will also recruit the requisite expertise to begin trading its copper and should be able to compete because it has direct access to the resources. The measure will provide the government with a view into the financial world of commodity trading, allowing it to know how much profit remains from its copper, some of it in nations like Switzerland, where commodity dealers such as Glencore are domiciled, he added. By actively participating in the direct trading of copper, the country opens not only avenues for increased revenue, but also diversified economic investments and development projects. Indeed, if executed with strategic planning, 
This pivot could stimulate job creation, infrastructure development, and technological advancements, contributing to a more robust and resilient economy that transcends the limitations of traditional mining revenue models. So, how is Zambia's genius plan to engage in direct mineral trading instead of merely accepting royalties set to change the minerals market? Many experts agree that this bold step introduces a substantial new player, potentially altering the balance of power within the global copper trade. The move could influence pricing dynamics, supply chain logistics, and competitive market structures challenging established industry norms. With Zambia actively engaging in direct trading, other copper-producing nations may reassess their strategies, leading to a ripple effect that reshapes the dynamics of the entire minerals market. This shift has the potential to foster increased competition, transparency, and efficiency, bringing about a more dynamic and responsive global marketplace for copper and minerals. Also, it is worth mentioning that Zambia's pioneering shift to direct copper trading, bypassing reliance on mine stake revenues, has the potential to reverberate across the rest of Africa. The initiative could serve as a beacon for other resource-rich nations in the continent, inspiring them to reconsider their approaches to natural resource management. By seeking greater control and direct engagement in trading, Zambia sets an example for maximizing economic returns from mineral wealth. This move might encourage other African nations to reassess their strategies, fostering a collective push towards more assertive and lucrative models of resource utilization. In doing so, Zambia's pivot could spark a broader transformation, elevating Africa's position in the global economic landscape and reshaping the narrative around resource-rich nations' ability to leverage their assets for sustained development. However, it is crucial to note that Zambia's groundbreaking pivot towards direct copper trading is not without its challenges. The transition from dependence on established traders to self-management demands robust systems, strategic partnerships, and market acumen. Furthermore, the inherent volatility of the global copper market, influenced by geopolitical tensions, economic policies, and technological advancements, adds complexity to Zambia's ambitious endeavor. Navigating this intricate landscape will be crucial for Zambia as it aspires to establish itself as a formidable player in the copper trade. As the Zambian government continues on this ambitious road, the world will be watching closely to see how this bold strategy plays out and what it means for the future of global copper trading. Your perspective matters. What do you make of Zambia's plan to get more revenue from its mineral resources, specifically copper? Share your insights and thoughts in the comments below. For continued updates on global affairs and diplomatic developments, be sure to subscribe to the New Africa channel. Stay informed, stay engaged. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to bringing you more insightful content in the future.